присвяченный долученным с украинской молоки до управления интернетом. Мы проводим его в рамках инициативы громадской организации СТАК щодо заснования USAID. Меня зовут Александр Царук. Я дехто меня называет экспертом в управлении интернетом чи представником альтернативным представником Украины в рядовом выбирающем комитете ICANN. А також я працюю в комитете IT с питань информатизации и связи с Для чего потрібно звернути увагу, що в 2005 році в звіті після всесвітнього форуму з інформаційного суспільства було запропоновано визначення, що чим же є собою інтернет-гарманс. І з цієї точки зору, з цієї позиції існує досить велика кількість академічних, професійних і фахових думок, але загальноприйнятим вважається визначення, яке включає в себе розвиток та застосування урядом, приватним сектором, громадянським суспільством, а також я особисто вважаю, що представниками науки та освіти різноманітних процедур, програм, а також напрямків розвитку і застосування інтернету. Пізніше це визначення було розширено професором Бенкером, і він ввів до нього три рівня визначення інтернету, який полягає фізичною інфраструктурою, логічний рівень, а також контекстний рівень. Відповідно, перше являє собою обмін інформацією на рівні інфраструктури, наступний – це програмний рівень, і третій рівень – це, власне, та інформація, яка поширюється і передається в мережі інтернет. Відповідно, з точки зору даного визначення, це досить поширена інфографіка, можна було б виключити світ, так? Досить поширена інфографіка, яка в себе включає основні організації, які управляють інтернетом. Це архітектурне бюро управління інтернетом, ICAN, IETF, IGF, також багато інших організацій. Я б хотів би зупинитися на ролі ICAN як інтернет-корпорації з імен номерів в інтернет. Саме ця організація займається адмініструванням адресного та номерного простору в мережі інтернет і відповідає за присвоєння організаціям. Це можуть бути, до речі, різні організації, в різних країнах різні підходи. Це академічні структури, наприклад, в Китаї та в Парагваї, домени, так званий country code top level domain, вони адмініструються академічними структурами, інститутами при університетах. В Україні, наприклад, національний домен адмініструється приватними компаніями, і, наприклад, в Тарвегії ці адміністрації займаються державні структури. І з цієї точки зору хотілося б ще послухати презентацію ролі ICANN в екосистемі управління інтернетом, а також, можливо, яким чином молодь могла б долучитися до тої багатосторонньої моделі управління інтернетом, а ще вона називається Multi-Stakeholder Model, яка безпосередньо презентована на даному слайді. Для цього ми послухаємо члена Ради директорів ICANN пана Маркуса. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? 
can you see me? Uh, we see, we hear you, and hope to see you soon. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we are, we are here to attract youth to internet government. So could you uh, tell us, is it possible to so uh, to to do this? There well, <laughs> hello. Yes. Good to see some familiar faces. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I mean, it's obviously important to uh, bring young people into the discussion. I mean, young people are the future and they grew up with the internet and they uh, are used to an internet they like, an open, global and interoperable internet and internet governance, the discussions are ultimately a discussion about what kind of internet we want to have. So I think uh, young people should get involved and maybe internet governance is a, a very abstract word, but when you tell them what it's all about, what kind of internet do you want? Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay then they might get more interested. You know, do you want an internet where they can communicate with their friends and colleagues across the world, as they can do now? Or do they want an internet where there are national borders, as some governments would like? Then I think uh, the young people might get also a little bit more interested because they usually are quite passionate about the internet. Internet. They want to be connected and they want to talk to their friends and stay connected. Okay, great. Uh, can you provide us some information about uh, some uh, fellowship or uh, other programs for, for youth? Well, there are various, uh, various organizations have uh, different programs trying to bring in young people. I can does so, ISOC uh, does so, uh, the upcoming IGF, I think ISOC and uh, the local <coughs> organizers and the LAC community put in quite great off efforts to bring young people to the IGF. And also uh, there are uh, great efforts on the way to have remote participation so that people who are not able to be physically at the meeting can connect via the internet. And the internet is obviously a great tool to uh, stay connected and to connect with people who are not physically there. <laughs> How many people are, are attending your meeting? So, not, not a lot. So we have some, we had some problems with logistics. So we have uh, uh, some young people here, and uh, uh, maybe you want to ask some question about uh, possible ways of engagement of youth uh, to uh, the internet governments to ITM or how to participate in some uh, programs. Because Marcus could be your uh, um, referee in the selection process. You, you, you can speak in Russian and Oksana can translate. Uh, I can speak, uh, English, <laughs> so Unfortunately, I won't be able to communicate with you in your language. <laughs> but I rely on interpreters. Good evening. Uh, my name is Valerie. And uh, you know, uh, it's quite a new sphere for me. But uh, I'm really interested in participating. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you very well. Uh, Maybe you have to go closer to the uh, yeah. computer. Of course. Uh, you know, um, could you uh, able to explain uh, the uh, maybe uh, the criteria uh, how uh, to um, pass this way successfully in order to be engaged in this process? Uh, well, I have not personally been involved in any uh, selection process for fellowships, but usually, uh, you know, the whole internet governance processes in all the various organizations 
are very open and you can join by uh, joining mailing lists uh, through remote participation but it's I know not always that easy when you're new to the game uh, just to engage you don't know the people and nothing really replaces the one-to-one -one contact and that's why the internet community has meetings all the time you know you could think that they could do it all through the internet but it's not good enough they feel you can do a lot of things on calls uh, or through email exchanges but there comes a time when you get stuck and then you need to have a face-to-face -face meeting where you can discuss things and that is for an outsider quite a bit of a hurdle, I'm aware of that. Uh, and the uh, various internet organizations, uh, including ICANN, they do have uh, usually their uh, selection processes where candidates have to show that they know a thing or two about the organization, about the internet. Uh, the ICANN is a different organization, let's say, from ISOC, but, you know, a common basic uh, foundation is expected. And Diplo, for instance, does also a very great job of uh, bringing in new people to the discussions, uh, give a, do some groundwork. And many people went through the Diplo courses, but ISOC has also uh, courses, ICANN has these courses. So. Uh, all I can say is I encourage you uh, to get involved, visit their websites, see what's on offer and uh, subscribe to some of the courses you can see. And uh, while at the beginning it may seem very complicated, but uh, once uh, you get over the shock of acronyms, as you will have noticed, there are an awful lot of acronyms. Uh, and once you get to know some people, then it gets a bit easier. And I think uh, uh, we are all aware of that, that we have to you know, increase uh, the diversity. We don't always want to see the same old people, but we want to see young people coming in and also coming in from different countries with different language and different cultural backgrounds. The internet is a global medium and it does need uh, diverse and global participation. But there's no uh, single way in, there are multiple ways in. And I do remember uh, last year uh, in João Pessoa at the IGF meeting in Brazil, uh, there were the Brazilians made a great effort to bring in young people and uh, they were very active and engaged in the discussions and very enthusiastic and I think the more veteran participants in these discussions greatly appreciated the uh, the enthusiasm coming from these young people so uh, you know do feel don't feel uh, put off but feel whenever you engage you are welcomed even if it doesn't feel like that but <laughs> Because obviously when there are lots of people who know each other, it's not that easy for a newcomer sort of to feel that you're part of the gang. But uh, that it does not mean that you're not welcome. I greatly would encourage you to make the effort and uh, stay engaged. Great. So Nicholas has an extra question from young gentleman. Yes, yeah. I'm Max, I'm uh, nice to meet you uh, and I have following question, uh, what special requirements may be, uh, you can say about some special requirements for people uh, willing to participate in aforementioned projects. Uh, there, is, sorry, you, there are the some uh, special here. requirements or not? So for can, people can willing you to participate. The question? I didn't hear it that well. So, uh, does, uh, Ukrainian youth need, need to have some some special requirements or this participation is open for everyone? 
Well, it's uh, indeed it is open for everyone, and I think in um, if you go to an ICANN meeting, uh, there are different groups of people, uh, and you have to find what could be your home. You know, there are the registries, there are the registrars, and unless you are a registry or registrars, you are not really part of that group, but there are other groups, there is the at-large community, there are the non-commercial stakeholder groups uh, where any individual can join. These are essentially groups that are made for the internet user. And, uh, you know, when you go to a, a, a meeting, it may not be that obvious, but once you have found the place where you're most comfortable with, uh, then uh, you uh, will find people will take you under, you under their wing and will help you also uh, showing you the ropes, how you can uh, uh, make yourself uh, feel useful and I have seen many people who you know attend maybe the second or third ICANN meeting and they're already fairly familiar and they have found their niche so to speak and uh, they know where to go and uh, what meetings to attend and what issues matter to them and also you know, there are so many issues not every issue is important to everyone that uh, some people care, care a lot about some issues whereas other people care more about other issues mm -hmm. the non-commercial stakeholders have uh, different priorities to the commercial stakeholders or the intellectual property or the business constituency uh, so you know you put together your own agenda and your own priority and I don't know whether I have answer your question, so don't hesitate to give a follow-up question. Oh, thank you. And, and there, uh, there are no stupid questions, there are only stupid answers. <laughs> so thank you. And we have uh, one short question from the most famous lady in Ukrainian internet garments ecosystem, uh, Oksana. So please. I guess you know each other. So Marcus, very we happy to see you. Yes, uh, we see hope to see you in Kiev in person. Uh, so I uh, will have two um, very short questions. Um, uh, the first question is about linguistic barriers. Uh, I am sure that uh, this young person, uh, Valeria, uh, helped a lot last year with translation, uh, a lot of internet governance uh, documents into Russian and uh, into Ukrainian. So uh, I hope Valeria can understand I can, I saw, and other uh, abbreviations. I'm not sure about uh, uh, a lot of other participants. Uh, how we can deliver the uh, content of all this process, which is uh, 10, uh, even 15 years uh, old, into Russian, into Ukrainian, because we have not only linguistic barriers, but uh, cultural barriers. How to uh, jump this gap? Uh, this is the first question. And um, uh, my second question is about uh, our seventh uh, IJF UA, which will uh, have place uh, in Kiev uh, on October 14th. We are uh, very happy that you uh, welcomed our first IGF UA in 2010. Uh, we hope uh, that we can also address the participants of our IGF UA uh, at least uh, remotely. And we hope to see you in Kiev in person for our next events. Thank you. Well, uh, <coughs> I can definitely uh, address your meeting remotely. Uh, on the 14th, you said, uh, well, I think in theory, I think uh, my, I thought it was, was earlier when I had the clash, but uh, except that it's a bit short notice, uh, but in theory, it might be possible. It's just a one day meeting? Or? Sorry? One it's day. a one day meeting. One day meeting. Uh, maybe you can uh, prepare uh, your video uh, address, video address. Yeah, well, I, or, or I could do a, a via Skype address or something. Yeah. 
happy to do that. But your first question was a linguistic balance. It's a, a, a very relevant question and uh, at the same time a difficult question. Uh, you know, the whole internet culture, as you know, developed in the United States. And it came out of a uh, 60s, 70s background, which was a time of uh, emancipation, flower power, and a very uh, sort of utopian feeling uh, of uh, a future that would be very bottom up and democratic, and the whole internet infrastructure, the way the internet uh, is set up, reflects that sort of distributed nature and the overlay. Uh, structure of internet governance uh, is built on the underlying technology. It's also distributed very bottom up. And this is at odds how governments usually work. And not every culture is familiar with that spirit. So there is a, how should I put it, a natural barrier between uh, the whole internet uh, governance uh, uh, the debate and how it works and it is at odds with the traditional way governments do business governments are much more in a pyramid bottom up is somebody in charge and then it comes from the top down and the whole distributed bottom-up nature of the internet governance, how it has evolved, does not translate easily into the world of governments. And that is not just, you know, in one particular reason, it's throughout the world. And now, some governments have actually embraced uh, the multi-stakeholder internet governance model because they feel it is adapted to the technology and they also realize that they as governments know much less how the technology works than the technologists do and also uh, the multi-stakeholder model allows for direct input from different interest groups uh, civil society, for instance, cares deeply about some of the issues like human rights, for instance, where civil society is a watchdog and they say, no, we don't want that governance, that goes too far, we don't want government surveillance because we want to keep our privacy. And they have a natural clash between two visions of the world, a more distributed bottom-up multi-stakeholder model versus a traditional top-down model. And I do remember I attended once a meeting on, in a Russian IGF where somebody explained to me uh, that multi-stakeholder is very difficult to translate into the language. And I think that is very much the heart of your question. Uh, you can translate words and it's difficult to translate concepts people are not familiar with. And that is indeed a challenge. And it's more than just language. It's essentially underlying approach to how you want the world to work. And uh, there, it, all of a sudden, it gets then very political. And the only uh, uh, advice I can give, try and find words that paraphrase, that explain. Uh, and it's the same as in multi-stakeholder as such, to translate it into German is equally difficult. Uh, you have to essentially explain uh, how it evolved and what it means. Now, these are the deep concepts, and then obviously then we have lots of acronyms, you know, 
CCTLDs, the GTLDs, and so on. These are the easier acronyms, but uh, when you look at uh, a transcript uh, from an ICANN meeting, it's full of acronyms, and that makes it very, very difficult for a newcomer to, to follow and to understand the discussion. And I think we are all aware of that, and uh, we try to uh, explain what they mean. But I think the only way, you know, you will not be able to get rid of all these acronyms they have developed. And if you always spell them out, it just gets too long. So you have to uh, learn what they mean and uh, get familiar with them. And, Again, you can do that uh, through courses such as uh, DIPLO or ISOC or so I can provide. And in the end, uh, again, what I said at the beginning, if you care about the internet, and I'm sure you do care about the internet because you also care about your future, what's in for you, then I can only encourage you to engage and to stay engaged and also discuss with your respective governments and uh, you know, make your point. And uh, you do maybe remember there was, when was it, four years back in the US, they were about to pass a new law essentially protecting uh, the copyrighted material and young people went to the streets. They said, no, we don't want that because it's not, you destroy the internet we want. You know, it's not about being legal or illegal, but do not mess up the internet. And that had a huge effect. Then the, the law was withdrawn and it, it shows that you actually uh, can make a difference when you stay engaged, but it's not about an abstract issue such as internet governance, it was more a, a concrete case, a new law we don't like. And I think uh, the same happened also in uh, Poland, I seem to remember, the people took to the streets and uh, also in Germany. Uh, it's usually uh, governments, obviously, uh, they listen to business and the business say, no, no, we need something, we have a business interest. And then governments have a tendency just to listen to one side. Those who are the loudest or the most influential. And that's why it's important then also that the normal internet user stands up and uh, defends the internet he or she wants. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. So, okay. okay. So thank you, Marcus, uh, for your contribution uh, to education, Ukrainian youth. We hope to see you in Kiev in some internet government events. Thank you. And we have a next uh, call. Goodbye. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure joining you. Bye-bye.